So we're given with the simplest perspective of expanded four meters. So the four meter is the place length. Then the cross section of a simple beam, let's say, is an I section. Let's say we have a built up section like this. So also 450 by 20 upper flange, same with the lower flange. And we have this 500 by 20. Now, so we're asked to determine for the slenderness ratio of the speed, the L over R2. So, of course, the L would be for 4,000 millimeters. We just need to solve for the R sub D. Now, if the section is standard, meaning to say, let's say we have a white right line section, and let's say uh, it is found in the steel manual, okay? At the steel manual, you can, there is a column there that you can find the R sub D property. So the R sub D can be found from the state plan by four standard sections. Unfortunately for this case, since this is a build up section, so we don't have uh, this R sub D property found from the state plan one. So we will be obliged to uh, solve for it. So how do we solve for R sub D? Okay, so let's go to this uh, definition of R sub D from the code. Accordingly, R sub D is defined as the radius of A region of the section comprising the compression flange plus one third of the compression web taken about an axis in the plane of the web. Alright, okay. what does it mean? When, when you hear our range of duration, what is the equation for range of duration? Square of I over D. But R sub D is a special range of duration particularly on the compression side of the beam. So it says here that this is the radius of deviation of the section comprising the compression flange. For this case, where is the compression flange? Simple beam is that is for passive moment. So the compression side will be on the top. So therefore the compression flange will be this. So this is the compression flange. Then, plus one third of the compression web. Where is the compression web? Where is the compression web? So this is the web. So where is the compression web? So this, this part. But it's stated that uh, there that it's only one third. So if this is 500, this becomes 250. So one third of 250, see this one. Is 250 over 3, one third of 250. This would be the one third of the compression web. So, it's only for our survey, we need the moment of inertia of that shaded area as well with the area. Okay. Now, taken about an axis in the plane of the web, what does it mean? Where is the axis in the plane of the web? So here is the web, so the axis would be here. So what would be the moment of inertia of this shaded area about this axis? So basically that's, that's, a, that's a moment about y, moment of inertia about y. So, so that would be what's the inertia of this upper line of the compression plan? About the uh, axis of the plane of the web. So 20, 450, cube over 12. Do I need to transfer that inertia? Where is the local center of that inertia? Here. Do I need to transfer it? Of course, because it coincides the axis of the plane of the web of any. Now, plus. What about for the compression web? So it will be 250 over 3 times 20 cube over 12. So I need to transfer that inertia no more because the local axis, the, the local centroid, coincides the axis of the plane of the web. That's it. Divided by the area, area of the compression flange. This is 
650 times 20 then the rate of the compression there would be 250 over 3 times 20 okay, so calculating for that that will give you the value of reverse of the EMP 